a strategic position on the River Danube, which links ten nations and four capitals, has enabled Budapest to flourish over the centuries as a regional hub of trade and manufacturing. 100 years ago, Hungary's textiles industry was enjoying a golden age. But in recent decades, foreign competition and more dramatically the collapse of the Soviet-led common market in the early 1990s has forced dozens of textiles factories out of business. Some plants, such as this one, owned by Joseph Schinker, have survived, and their ability to adapt with the times has helped them to weather the various storms. The country's economy has also diversified, and today the Made in Hungary label is not only visible on large rolls of fabric, but increasingly on the finished product as well, high-end pret-a-porte clothing. This, as a new generation of Budapest designers, is starting to emerge and is turning heads internationally. Amongst them, Andras Toth, the creative director of the local brand Use Unused. Actually, we've been the first generation who started to think in different, especially about fashion. To be a designer in Hungary and to work in Budapest, that can give you a special kind of taste. I think it's like this because we've grown up in a different era. We had this kind of socialism for 40 years. We've been part of the Russian Empire and we've been part of the Turkish Empire for 150 years. So that all of these kind of historical elements makes the city really interesting and eclectic in a way. This eclectic mix of historic influences is immediately visible when you arrive in Budapest, which is dotted with grand neo-Gothic and Art Nouveau buildings and at the same time prefabricated tower blocks dating back to the socialist era. This clash of styles and the austere aesthetic of the socialist days seems to have had a significant impact on this new generation of Budapest designers, many of whom speak nostalgically about the past. We are the generation after the socialism uh, who does fashion designing in Budapest and we are free spirits so we can design whatever we want. But actually my brand DNA, is, it grows back to socialism. Lots of inspiration comes from that. I love the prints, I love the objects, I love the, the houses, the, the architecture. So it is a, a scent which is in my brand and I think like lots of other Hungarian brands are uh, excited to, to use that as an inspiration. The boutiques of young designers like Dory's are mushrooming across Budapest. In most cases, the premises have a similar one-stop shop model with retail, atelier and offices cohabiting. Whilst these new entrants to the city's fashion scene seem undeterred by the bureaucratic business environment and VAT at 27%, the one hurdle many of them do lament is the difficulty in attracting investment, without which they struggle to grow. Sandra Sandor, the founder of the Nanushka label, is one of the lucky few to have had a financial backer, and that's allowed her to expand and bring more talent on board. In 2012, we managed to close an investment deal with the venture capital firm in Hungary. And actually, in the region, we were the first fashion venture capital investment, which is a big thing in the region because no one, no one dared to invest in fashion. Since 2012, it's a, a whole new chapter. We started to hire people for every territory and department. So since then, I think we can strategically and consciously grow the business. This investment appears to be working out well. 62 cities, 27 countries, but this is home, reads the sign in Nanushka's shop window. Although Sandra herself studied at the London College of Fashion, the majority of Budapest designers attended the city's state-owned University of Art and Design, which is known by its acronym MOME. Part of this university's appeal is the involvement of respected names on the local design scene, like the shoe designer Reka Vargo and the knitwear designer Ildika Kelly, who form part of the cadre of teachers and who in many cases themselves studied here. With 300 applicants for just 25 slots on the BA course each year, securing a place at MOME isn't easy. And popularity for the courses is growing not just amongst Hungarian students, but also those from further afield. When I was a student here, there weren't any foreign students in the, in the university at all. And now if I look around, there are a lot of 
students from, from all around Europe and I think this is great and I think this is a great opportunity for our students as well to speak with them, to get in touch with them, to, to be more open with the cultural uh, differences. So, so that's what I, I really missed when I was younger. This growth in numbers of foreign students is another sign of Budapest's growing international reputation as a creative hub. This is, after all, a city which now boasts its own annual fashion week. The Hungarian government, too, appears to be taking note of this thriving design scene, and as well as offering more bursaries, it is channeling more than 35 million euros into modernizing Monet, meaning that by the autumn of 2016, the students will have brand new state-of-the-art workshops. This kind of investment seems to be exactly the kind of fuel that Budapest's fashion industry needs in order to take off. It's not a huge city as London or Paris. And even if you do the production here, like lots of big companies from, from around the world do production in, in Hungary, it's actually quite easy to get your, uh, your collections produced. The fashion scene in Budapest is just expanding and it's great. Uh, new stores are opening, new designers are, are, um, are getting into fashion. It's very hard, I'm not saying it's easy, it's super hard. But I think at this point, like Hungary will have a huge opportunity to expand fashion businesses. It may still be a while before Budapest starts appearing alongside London, New York, Paris and Tokyo as a global centre of fashion. But things are changing fast and the Hungarian capital is fizzing with enthusiasm. For the country's remaining textiles companies and garment makers, all of this can only be a good thing. They're perfectly positioned to benefit from this upswing in demand for their wares and services and the growing international awareness of the Made in Hungary label. For Monocle in Budapest, I'm Tom Burgess-Watson.